Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. Today is a wonderful day, and I am sitting here with some of the amazing, amazing women uh, that I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Some of the amazing women of the wonderful organization of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And I am just privileged today to be here with these devastating divas. Hallelujah. Greatly, greatly appreciative for them and all that they bring to the community as well as to the world. I'm going to take an opportunity to let them introduce themselves. It's a special treat to be able to hear from them and to be able to uh, understand what their purpose and their goals are. And they're not only going to be here with us on this morning in this interview, but they're going to be with us in morning worship. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to let them introduce themselves and the capacities that they fulfill and all those wonderful things. And we're going to start right here next to me. Good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Nelson, and I am my chapter's assistant recording secretary. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brenda Dorsett, and I am the chapter's recording secretary. Okay. Good morning. We're happy to be here at Oak Grove. My name is Felicia Milner, and I'm the vice president of the High Point Alumni chapter, bringing greetings from our president as well, Kimberly Moore Wright. Thank you for having us. All right. This is here, y'all. I'm here with the dignitaries of the High Point Alumni chapter. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Tilman, senior pastor here at the Oak Grove Baptist Church, and I'm just uh, glad, so glad to be able to be here with them and to be able to share this platform and this opportunity with them. I, they are no strangers to the Oak Grove Baptist Church. Typically, once a year, uh, sometimes even twice a year, they'll come and join us in our morning worship, and because we're living in a pandemic, we are just doing everything virtual now. So it's just a privilege to be able to be here with them and be able to share this platform and work with them, not only in church, but as well in the as well as in the community. So as I'm here with the, as I said earlier, the High Point Alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, I just kind of want to kick this segment off, just, just real short interview off, just to kind of ask you, one of you just take an opportunity to steal the floor and tell me something about this amazing organization, these 1913 divas. Just, to, just tell us something about it. anything you want. Just tell us something interesting. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned 1913 okay. because it is a very special year for special. us. It was the year that we were founded, but it was also the year that we began our political activism. So on March 3rd of 1913, we, we participated in a march that helped women to earn the right to vote. Now, we knew that we wouldn't have the right, but we were there with other white women, and we wow. marched at the back of the line because we knew that our history was going to be intertwined with theirs. So that was our first act of public service and social activism. We have a female president, I mean vice president now, so we're very my, happy my, about don't that. don't have one, Madam <laughs> Vice President, yes. <laughs> very happy about that. So I think that that's one thing that kind of stands out to me when you mentioned 1913 ladies. Wow. Absolutely, and I concur. Um, one of the interesting things that I'd like to share about Delta Sigma Theta Sorority is that we actually have over a thousand chapters, both nationally and internationally. Uh, folks really may not be aware, we have chapters in Bermuda, in Korea, in Germany, um, so in Tokyo. So we're not just here in High Point or Greensboro or Winston-Salem, we are here nationally in all 50 states, well, most of the 50 states, but we're not just domestic, we're international as well. And um, our thrust, of course, is for black educated college women, but we do open our ranks to include college educated women. So we're grateful to be here this morning, and that's my interesting fact about Delta Sigma Theta. Wow. So look, as, actually, after listening to both of you talk about it, listening to both of you talk about um, Delta Sigma Theta on a national platform, I would actually go on record to probably say you're very proud. It's probably admit this these last week or so that we've uh, now um, had a female, African-American female, um, to come into uh, the presidency uh, or vice presidency. Uh, I'm sure that means something great to you, being the fact that how you got founded, what you stand for, and things of that nature. How, how does that make you feel? How does it make you feel knowing that our first African-American woman is, a, or our first vice president is um, an African-American woman, and she's an HBCU graduate, She's part of the behind nine as well, you know. So I mean, and listening to you talk about some of these things, how, how does that make your organization feel? Your roots feel? It makes me feel proud. It makes me feel seen. Ah. Um, as an HBCU grad, you sometimes people always wonder why. Why did you choose here? Why did you choose there? Um, I'm a graduate of North Carolina A and T, and and Howard. Can and I get like no. a geek? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get involved. It makes me feel very proud as a woman, as an Aggie, yeah, as South of you, as a Delta, as a. Um, as a black woman in general. I've, I've never been so proud. Uh, when we got the notice on Saturday, y'all know I'm very emotional as it is, I just cried. Um, so representation matters and we finally have 
your presentation. And I actually wanted to add one other thing to that. We're very, very proud of our uh, of our sister, not our sorority sister, but our sister nonetheless, right, right. Um, Madam Elect um, Vice President um, Kamala Harris. But I also want to give props to a couple of other of our sisters, uh, Keisha Lance Bond, yes. and uh, she was actually a Delta yes. uh, down in Atlanta. We're on the front line, obviously. Absolutely. Obviously. And also uh, Sarah Abrams, who did a phenomenal job with voter registration. After she lost her bid for governor, but she said, you know what, this is it. We're just gonna, we're gonna get in this fight. She took two years and she led the, the charge to get over. I think they said 800,000 voters uh, registered in the city of Atlanta. So, you know, your vote counts. You gotta get out there and do it. So there are some phenomenal women out there doing phenomenal things. Absolutely. And we are proud of Stacey Abrams. She's not one of our sororities. But she does seem to have the attributes of what a wonderful Delta woman should be, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you. But let's be clear, um, black women have paved the way. And we make the decisions, and I feel like it was because of our vote that things are beginning to happen. And we do feel empowered. I'm like, Felicia, it makes me feel proud, makes me feel seen. And it's, an, it's a wonderful day for black women across the world. Wow. Um, and speaking across the world, we talked about Delta Sigma Theta on a national level. Um, the national level, all those wonderful things. Uh, but let's talk a little bit specifically. Let's bring it a little closer to home because, as you, as you know, we service the city of High Point, Oak Grove Baptist Church. We're here in the city of High Point, the beautiful city of High Point, North Carolina. Um, and let's just talk a little bit about the High Point alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Let's talk, talk about this a little bit. Tell us something interesting about it. And I know we've got several members set. Sister Brenda Dorset, amen, is actually a part of us. She's a part of our, she's a part of our membership. We've got some other High Point alumni. Um, members, several half one alumni members here in our, our congregation. So we're just grateful for that. But talk to me just a little bit about the half one alumni chapter and all that you do to service because it's not just a national thing. Uh, as you know, a lot of people look at Divine Nine organizations and they think all we do is party and have cookouts and drink and all that good stuff. And so I think it's good to be able to highlight some of the more positive attributes of why we do what we do. And so I'd like to bring it a little bit closer to home as we highlight this amazing chapter. Tell me a little something about High Point alumni chapter. Okay. And I was not pledged at High Point uh, alumni. Okay. But what I do know about these women, uh, we are founded on sisterhood, scholarship, and service. And Wonderful. these women take sisterhood to a whole, whole Did you say a whole nother? You, <laughs> you said a whole nother. She said a whole nother. That's why I'm here. Wonderful. Um, they not only brought you in, they kept you here. They elevate. They wow. High Point alumni is I that chapter. Right. That, that, it's that, that chapter. chapter. Okay. Um, we Look have, at the guys, they, they just need <laughs> Let me go. I got something to say. I got something to say. Um, we do have some strong youth initiatives that uh, help to support uh, kids as early as the age of 10. So we have Delta Academy. Okay. Uh, that's for the younger girls who are in grades 6 through 8. We have Delta Gyms for our high, high school girls. But we're not going to leave out the fellas either. We also okay. have an embodied program. I'll, I'll that. I'll that. We have a wonderful embodied program that's very active for our young wonderful. men. So we try to reach them early. Um, we want them to understand that scholarship and service is very important. And so we use uh, those initiatives as a way to reach the youth within our community. Okay. And I just wanted to, to add that uh, within our organization, we have several committees that actually form um, High Point Alumni Chapter, as with other chapters throughout um, the city, the state, um, and the country, as well as the world. But we focus on several different things, anything from um, feeding the hungry. Um, we have local as well as international um, initiatives that we do. Um, we also uh, do um, donations to local educational um, organizations. We work with the local lives. Um, we work at um, some of the homeless shelters. So we get a lot, um, we get involved in community service. That's really our thrust. We want to give back. Good, good, amazing, wow, amazing. This is a wonderful thing. It just kind of, it's a, it's a blessing to be able to have strong women um, in the community, in the city of High Point, with the way our communities are set up now. I think it's very important, I think it's imperative that our presence is made known, not just on a national level, but on a community level. And I just want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to the um, amazing women of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, particularly the High Point Alumni Chapter that services the city of High Point. Um, as you know, the Delta of High Point is one of nine of the organizations of the Divine Nine, the NPHC, the National Pan-Atlantic Organization, uh, 
Council. So we're just grateful to be able to have them and be able to have them serve our city as they continue to do. In closing remarks, is there anything, is there one last particular thing, one last plug we just want to throw in there just to be able to say about Delta? Before? Just one, just one thing? I know, I know several <laughs> things. It's just, just one plug as we get ready to hear. Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, but we also have a service area that includes uh, Jamestown, Archdale, right. and Trinity, and Thomasville. Yes. All right, all right, so wonderful. Listen, I'm just greatly appreciative for the whole idea and the willingness for you to be able to come out in a pandemic and to be able to share with our viewers on this morning uh, about the amazing things your organization is doing, not only on a national level or a state level, but on a city and a community level. Continue to do the work that your founders have planted in this earth to, for you to do, and you're doing a great job there. I just want to say thank you, and I'm even more grateful. I'm even more grateful that y'all have decided to come and worship with us on this morning. Yes, sir. grateful to have the amazing member of the High Point Alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta worshiping with us on this morning. So as we get ready to go into morning worship, can we just take a moment and celebrate these amazing women and these wonderful chapter members that have come to sacrifice their time and continue to put their hands to the community and do the work of their founders as well as the work of God. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you for having us. Thank you for having and doing. thank you for what you do in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look, it takes all of us. As they oftentimes just say it takes a village to raise a child. It takes that same village to take care of the village. And so I'm a firm believer of that. So we'll keep pushing each other along. We'll keep connecting hands and connecting arms and doing what we can do to make the city of High Point a better place. So at this time, we're getting ready to go into morning worship. Don't, don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. Just stay right where you are and join us in the sanctuary on this morning as our praise team gets ready to lead us forward. Thank you and God bless you.
Amen. Just want to thank God for you joining with us on today. Special recognition to the High Point Alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta who's worshiping with us on this morning virtually. And so we thank God that they, they could have gone to church anywhere. They could have tuned into anybody's broadcast. But I'm thankful to God that that chapter has decided to worship with us on this morning. So grab a neighbor, grab a friend. Amen. Tell them we can ready to go to the word of the Lord. Grab your Bibles real quickly and go with me. Grab, we're going to go back to Judges chapter 7. We're going to pick up where we left off on last week. Amen. I believe that the Lord has something else to say to us. Uh, Judges chapter 7. Last week we find ourselves, found ourselves, amen, talking about Gideon, an amazing faithful servant, amen, amazing faithful servant who spoke to us last week and told us that we have nothing to lose. Hallelujah. This week we're going to just gonna pick right up where we left off. Well, I guess you can call it part two if you want to. Amen. But I just believe the Lord has something else to say to us, just a little bit more to say to us. And we're going to pick up right there in verse number 13. Yeah, Judges chapter 7, beginning at verse number 13. I'm going to read it to you hearing about two or three verses. Judges 7 and 13 says, And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dream, uh, I behold a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it, and it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. Verse number 14. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the, the man of Israel. For into his hand God hath delivered Midian and all the hosts. Somebody say, in his hand, in his hand, in his hand. Last verse, verse number 15. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Just for a few minutes, that's good enough right there. Just for a few minutes, we're just going to talk and share, amen, what the Lord has given us to talk and share about today. We're going to talk from the subject matter. Don't leave out empty-handed. Hallelujah. I dare you to scream that to somebody in your atmosphere. Text it, tweet it to somebody. Drop it in the chat. Tell them, say, neighbor, neighbor. whatever you do, don't leave out empty-handed. Glory to God. Don't leave out empty-handed. Beloved of God, on last we had the privilege and the opportunity to be able to explore and expand and talk about the whole concept and the idea of being fully dependent on God. Uh, uh, we talked, had the privilege to be able to uh, identify the concepts and the understanding that sometimes in this journey of life, in this walk of God, there are often times where we start out with a whole lot and we don't always end with what we started with. Uh, there are often times, where, whether that is strength, whether that is money, or whether that is people around you. Uh, in some cases, it could be resources and opportunities, but there are many times in this life that we start out in one capacity, but end in another. Uh, at the end of the day, though, no matter how you start, I think it's important to understand that, that we make sure that we always keep the end goal in mind. You know, last week when we were talking and, and we were sharing the whole concept, the whole idea of the text on last week kind of was an entryway to our text on this week because as long as we end with victory in our hands, that's what matters. And we understood that because God had already made promises to us. God had already made promises to his people. God has continued to make promises to you who are sitting out there listening in the land on today. And it's important to be able to understand that in the promises that God is making to us, that a promise is only as valuable as the person who issues the promise. And because we know that God is the greatest promise keeper, that if God said it, then that settles it. I thought I'd get a few amens right there. I said that because we know who God is and because God's word cannot lie and because God cannot fail, we have to come to the place of understanding that anything that God says, he's going to bring it to pass by any means necessary. Uh, after reading and understanding Gideon's journey in his life, after understanding uh, his, his background as a militant man, after understanding uh, his weaknesses, after understanding the tribe that he came from was one of the lesser tribes and, and the most uh, identified or known as the weakest tribe of them all, we still saw how important it was to still be able to lean and depend on God. It was through Gideon's journey, as many journeys, as many of us 
day after day. It was through his journey that we understood and identified how God allowed people to go with him, but some did not finish with him. God took Gideon on a journey over and over again in different strategies to be able to eliminate certain people from the camp. And it was through that that we began to understand and identify that where God is taking us, everybody can't go with us. Ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost right there. I said it was there that we began to understand and fathom now that in this journey that God has taken us on, where God intends for us to be, everybody cannot go with us. Just because they start out with you does not mean they're going to end with you. But the, the, the beauty in the story, the beauty in the struggle is that regardless who started out with me, regardless who finishes with me, God loves me enough, God loves you enough to make sure you get to where it is he needs you to be at. That's, that's not much for somebody, but for those of us who are out there who have been trusting and depending on God, who have been leaning on God's everlasting arms, it is good news to us to be able to understand that God has enough invested in me, that God cares enough about my future, that regardless of how bad I may feel, and regardless of who may walk out of my life, regardless of who does not believe in me, he's invested in me enough to understand that that God's going to make sure I get everything that's coming to me. Yeah. Thank God from God's side. And I guess somebody just scream out loud that God's going to make sure I get what's coming to me. Yes, uh, uh, Gideon shows us, he helps us to understand just as many people have uh, as we just come through a uh, for many of us have been a victorious in the election uh, we understand how important it is to be able to fathom the whole concept that when you put hard work in and you put trust into what you're doing uh, that God has a way of bringing that up full circle uh, as we see that God is still doing things uh, in the land and in our lives I think it's important to be able to fathom that we must do our part. Yeah. If anybody taught us that, uh, President-elect Joe Biden, uh, Vice President-elect Madam Vice President-elect Kamala Harris teaches us that we must make sure that if we intend to have victory in the end, we just have to make sure we do our part in the equation. Now, now don't get it twisted. I didn't tell you to put your hands in the place of God's hands. I didn't tell you to step in God's way, but what I'm telling you is uh, that you have to get up from where you are and work the faith that you have. Come on, yeah. talk to me. The Bible will tell us that faith without works is dead. Therefore, you have to get up off your knees, speaking in tongues, and rolling in the floor, and slobbing all over yourself, and be able to put the faith that you talk about into action. We now understand how Gideon felt when God forced him to put his faith into action, as God helped him, as God helped him to, to be able to sift through all these people in our lives. Uh, Gideon, the story of his Gideon tells us that he started out with several thousands, but it was only a few hundred that he ends up with. As we talked on last week, we shared the whole concept of, of how sometimes when we lose stuff that we have to be able to change our perspective. We talked on last week to bring us up to this week. Gideon helped us to understand that sometimes when you lose things and people and, and stuff in our life, he helped us to understand that all losses are not a loss. Gideon helped us to identify how God strategically put his plan in place. Gideon helped us to understand that as some people began to fall off in his life, he is then beginning to understand that the more people that fell off was the more strength that God was giving to the few people that he had left. Who am I helping you here on today? I came to tell somebody here, just like I did on last week, that every loss is not a loss. There are some things that God will eliminate from your life, and when God moves things out of your life, you better know if he's not going to move something without giving you more strength to endure because of, in other words, there's not going to be any lack or deficiency in your life. I don't know who I came to help, but I came to prophesy to somebody on today to tell you that I don't care who God shifts out of your life, he's going to always make sure you're taken care of. Scream at somebody around and say, God will always make sure I'm taken care of. Of understanding that, then you have to understand that if all losses are not a loss, uh, then I understand that in my life there will be no lack or deficiency. There will be no deficit. Uh, my money's not going to go lack. And my, there's always going to be food on my table. There, there's going to be gas. If my tank ain't full, he's going to always make sure I got gas in the car because when God starts moving and shifting things, the one thing you have to give credit to him to understand is that when God does something, he does it well. 
and God ain't gonna never move somebody or something out your life without making sure you're good and taking care. Who am I prophesying to on this morning that's scared to let some stuff go? Who am I helping on this morning that's scared to walk out on nothing? Who am I helping on this morning that has put their faith in a job and in a check made that I came to tell you, you better shift your perspective and understand that if God starts moving and shaking some stuff in your life, he gonna make sure you're good and taken care of. I guess somebody just scream out and say, take care of me, God, take care of me, God. Uh, not only does Gideon help us to understand that all losses are not a loss, but he helps us to identify that some losses are beneficial. He helps us to understand in the text how some losses are beneficial, that there are some things that we need to lose. There are some attitudes that we need to lose. There, there are some bad habits that we need. Look at somebody say, I need to lose some stuff. I need to lose some stuff. There are some people that are in our life that are draining us. Uh, they're like leeches, uh, and all they do is suck from you. They never put nothing into your life. There, there, I'm, I'm helping somebody on this one. There are some high maintenance relationships and some high maintenance friendships and you got some, I know I'm talking, I know I am. You got some high maintenance family members. Did I say that out loud? I said it out loud. I said you got some high maintenance family members that you need to cut off. Now, ain't nothing wrong with loving them from a distance, baby. Ain't nothing wrong with feeding them with a long handle spoon. See, some of y'all friends get mad right now because they on this broadcast and they know they're about to be cut off. Some of y'all ain't gonna talk to me on today. It's some folks in your life right now that you need to understand that all or some losses are beneficial. Gideon helps us to understand that because as God diminished his numbers, Gideon now begins to understand the context of when God says, not by spirit, not by might, but by, not, not by mighty numbers, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord, that I'm going to bring victory to and your life. So I'm now starting to understand. I'm now starting to see because when people, when certain things and certain people were connected to me, I really couldn't see God moving because I had more faith in them than I had in God. Who am I helping on today? It is there that I now begin to understand as God begins to shift and move things out the way how some losses can be beneficial. Because if had I not lost that, I wouldn't have really learned how to pray. Had I not lost that, I wouldn't have learned how to really worship and praise God. Uh, some of us would have never learned how to dance if we would have never got our back pressed against the wall. Uh, some of us would have never really learned how to fast and let God allow us to get a bad report. Some of y'all ain't going to talk to me on today. Because sometimes you don't get into a posture of prayer and praise and worship and fasting uh, until you get bad news about your child. Uh, sometimes you don't get, y'all ain't going to be honest with me on today. Sometimes it's not till God allows your back to be pressed against the wall that you realize I need to learn how to call on God for myself. Uh, it ain't good enough for grandmama to call on them. It ain't good for granddaddy to call on them. I need to know God for myself. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I learned. That's what I learned that some losses are beneficial. Uh, but it is because through some loss uh, I learned how to pray. Yes, sir. It is through some loss uh, that I learned how to trust God. Uh, lastly, Gideon tells us on last week how some losses, uh, some things that you have to lose along the way. Uh, having said that, then we understand what God brings us here in the operation of his strategic plan uh, in our life. Last week, we focused a lot on the buildup of Gideon uh, and the, the, the diminishing of his numbers in order to conquer what it is he needs to conquer. But today, God picks us up. Somebody say, picks us up. He picks us up and he drops us here in Judges chapter 7 yet one more time. He brings us here in Judges chapter 7. We're now we're full, we're forced to focus on the battle that Gideon has at hand. Now we understood his background. We understood what it was he was coming from. And now we have understood that God has took his numbers from several thousand now down to 300. 300 men. Yeah, he's the weakest of all tribes. His lineage tells him that you can't do this. There's no possible way. But Gideon has now been taxed with the task of bringing something back that God has already given unto him. That's why we pick him up in verses number 13 well, something begins to happen. The Bible says that, that now that God has diminished his numbers uh, and took him all the way down to 13, now Gideon understands uh, how God's plan comes into action for his life. Uh, I told you all last week, there are some details that God is not going to give you. Uh, there are some things that God is only going to reveal over time. Uh, the Bible says that some things will remain a mystery to us. Uh, I was talking to him the one day, and he told me, he said, Pastor, you may not understand everything, but there are some things that God has to allow to remain a mystery and he will reveal them to you as you go along as you needed them. 
tell you, ain't been nothing more enriching to my spirit than to understand that when you put yourself in a place to trust God like you've never trusted him before, when you put yourself in a place to have blind faith in God, you have to be able to walk in a dark room and say, God, I still know that you're here. Somebody say, blind faith, blind faith, blind faith. The Bible says we pick up Gideon here now when he is now been diminished to 300 men. And he arrives at the place where God orders his footsteps to be able to hear what the enemy has to say. The Bible says that Gideon walks up on the edge of the camp uh, into uh, the Midianite camp uh, and he hears them and he begins to talk to them. You hear what they begin to talk about? A dream that they had. God allows Gideon to be able to hear how the enemies are now become afraid afraid of what's about to happen. The Bible says this for, for the sake of time. Let me give you the cliff notes. The Bible says that in hearing them, Gideon's faith is not charged. In hearing what the enemy had to say about him, Gideon is now under, under the impression what God said he was going to do, he's going to do it. Who did I come to help in here on this morning? I came to tell somebody that you got to get the kind of faith that Gideon had to know that if God said it, then it's got to come to pass. Come on, just scream out to somebody in your atmosphere and tell them because God said it, it's got to come to pass. I need you to put some wind in your jaws. I need you to talk like you got a new hairdo. I need you to talk like you got a new outfit, a new pair of pumps. I need you to spread your shoulders and have some confidence in God and prophesy. Yes, I said prophesy to them and tell them that if God said it, it's got to come to pass. Oh, in the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says uh, that media, that Gideon now gets up into a place. Um, uh, and something real key happens in verse number 15. Uh, verses 13 and 14 says that he overhears them. Uh, but the key for me is verse number 15. Uh, the Bible says that when Gideon heard uh, the, uh, the telling of the dream and the interpretation, uh, uh, he went to his knees before God in prayer. Uh, not God today, because that's what's wrong with some of us. Uh, but the problem that I believe that many of us have is that when we hear a prophetic word over our life, we feel like we can go sit on the pews and do nothing. We feel like we can sit our happy hips down and just watch God let it all unfold. Ah, oh, but I came to tell you on today that the prophetic word that comes uh, helps us to understand it's the end, the result. Uh, just because the word comes, the word prophetic comes, uh, it helps us to understand that's the end result. But you have to be able to walk through the process that will lead you to the prophetic end. Yeah. Who am I talking to in here on today? Gideon yeah, can do like some of us did. When we come up in the prayer line, somebody rub us down with oil. We fall out and shake a little bit. We get up and go back to our seat and tell everybody everything's going to be all right. No, 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 baby. The Bible said that Gideon got up from where he was. And he went down to his knees to call in prayer. And I'm looking for the kind of church on today that says, when I hear a word from God in here, I don't mind going to call in prayer. I'm looking for the kind of church that said, Pastor, when we come to church for choir rehearsal the next time, I don't care what the agenda is, as long as God is there, that's all that matters. I'm looking for the kind of church that says, I don't care what's on program to do. I just want God to get the glory out of this particular meeting. I want to talk to somebody here that knows the power you and the power of prayer. That knows that when I call on God, that he will come to see about me. I want to talk to some intercessors. I know I got some intercessors listening to me. This is I got to tell everybody what's going on about my business. I got to tell everybody what God showed me in prayer. But what I'll do is I'll step into the prayer chambers and I'll start calling on God. I wonder is there anybody out there that says, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. Because I've had a time or two I had to call on God myself. When the boss man wouldn't help me out. When my children wouldn't know where to be found. When my granddaddy couldn't pick up the phone. I got down on my knees yesterday. And I slid in my secret closet. And when I began to call on God, I'm a witness in the house on today. Gonna tell me when I call on him. He began to answer my prayer. All I'm trying to tell y'all is uh, that we serve a prayer answering God. Uh, I need somebody that believes that on today. Uh, that knows that God still answers prayer. Uh, I need you to encourage somebody around you. Uh, shake them by the hand if you got to. Uh, scream at them if you got to. Uh, 
sex of the freedom if you got to. Uh -huh. But I need you to pop the sign in their life. Uh -huh. And tell them I don't know what you've been holding on to. Uh -huh. But I got good news for you today. Uh -huh. That wherever you are, uh -huh. you got to answer your prayer. Y'all uh -huh. ain't talking nobody. Uh -huh. Reach across the aisles uh -huh. and scream at somebody. Uh -huh. Go into the other room. Oh, I cry, I cry for my soul, and that's how I know that he still has his prayer. And so the Bible says that Gideon goes to God, goes to God in prayer, and then he goes to the Israelites over into their camp. See, he didn't go tell them first. He went to prayer first, and then he talked to the people. And that's the problem with some of us. We talk more to people uh, than we do to God. Uh, but I got good news for somebody. Uh, God is shifting our perspective uh, to say, I'll talk more, uh, talk more to God. Uh, I'll pray more, uh, I'll pray more to God. Uh, then I'll talk to man. Uh, and then the Bible say uh, that the Israelite camp, uh, when Gideon went over, he told them, uh, where you are. Uh, we kind of get going from here. Uh, shake yourself because uh, you've been sitting down too long. Uh, shake yourself because uh, you've been waiting too long. Uh, wrap your arms uh, around yourself uh, and say, get up from here. Uh, we kind of get going uh, because God uh, has just given us uh, the media night army. See, what you didn't know uh, is that Gideon was teaching us something. Uh, he was teaching us uh, how to speak over our life. Uh, all Gideon heard uh, was the word of the Lord. Uh, but he came back to Israel uh, and said, Get up from here. Uh, you got to get going. Uh, because God uh, just gave us. Y'all missed that day. Uh, I don't have it in my hand. Uh, but God. Yeah. 
Lord. We understand a few things about going to battle. That's what Gideon, he tells them, get up from there. We got to get going. Because God just gave us the meeting I on Y'all miss that in it. The Bible says that he divided the 300 men into three companies. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Where am I tell some girls that? I know you're out there. I said, God said that he divided them up. And he told them, we're going to battle, y'all. But we're not going nowhere. But there is no spoil. I came to tell you that wherever God leads you to go, you better believe I'm not fighting where there is no spoil. I'm not going to battle in no land where I'm not coming out with more than I have. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I want to tell you that God said I'm bringing a slip in to you wasting energy huh? no more huh? after today huh? when you fight places huh? where there is no victory huh? no more huh? after this Sunday huh? when you fight huh? over something huh? that's not going to better you huh? and the Bible said huh? that Gideon huh? took them down huh? and split them up huh? and he gave them huh? a strategic plan huh? and he told them huh? And listen here, when we get down there, blow your trumpets and smash your and watch God call the enemy to get all scattered. I came to tell y'all that not only do you have nothing, nothing to lose, but also that you're not going out of this battle. Give your hand in. God said, when I get through, y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell somebody that God said, when I get through, you're going to have more than you had going in. Yeah, oh yeah, he's very divine, he's very divine. And don't mind going to battle, because you know that you're coming out with victory. Is there anybody that knows that you're coming out with more joy? Is there anybody that knows when I get to with this? I'll have, I'll have, I'll have more power, more money, more options, more resources. That's where I need somebody that's crazy. Everything about my life is getting ready to walk as we 
Don't walk out the door. Cause when you go, when you go back, don't go in the back. I'm not the one. Yeah.
Pastor, point this out. I heard God say, some of them are getting excited because they think it's going to be small. Some of them are getting excited because they think that this next miracle, this next move, this next open door is going to be just enough to get them through. When they didn't hear what I really said, Gideon told them in the text, get up, we got to get going. The Lord has given us the Midianite army. My God. The whole army. Some of y'all are rejoicing because you're thinking it's going to be just enough to pay the light. Some of y'all are rejoicing because you're thinking I'm going to have enough left over to get gas. But I want to tell you, you're not leaving out here empty handed, baby. God said, I'm going to give you the whole army. The whole army. I'm ready. I'm ready to put it all in your hands. fix it when you do more but less baby yeah. you're not leaving out of this battle empty handed Amen. God said I'm going to fix it where if you please me like I tell you to every time I tell you to I never get tired of you praising me I'll fix it where the, the enemy won't even stand around long enough and you'll be able to take anything you won't need yes you're not leaving empty handed come on lift those hands up for the Lord Amen. and worship him right here Come on, I know you just tore up your living room. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord right here. Why? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. Because he's able to do more with a little bit than you could ever do with a lot. As long as you have certain things, certain people, certain resources, as long as you trusted in your own ability, you would have took the credit for You would allow somebody else to take the credit for God said, but because you trusted, I'm going to fix it where the battle is guaranteed, the victory is guaranteed in this next battle. You won't even have to fight. Just show up. The Bible said they took off running. And anything given in them on, they could take it out. He gave them a whole army. All of their possessions, everything has been turned over into their hands. And I came to tell somebody on today, I don't care how much the enemy kicks his screams. I said, I'm putting it all in your hands. What you say will go. I'm giving you choices and options. I'm opening multiple doors for you. Because I gave you the whole army. I'm giving you an abundance. Yes. No, you don't deserve it. But because you trust in me, I'm giving you the spirit of abundance. Because you stay with me. I want to pray with y'all today. Lift your hands right there. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, bless these your people, the sheep of your pasture. God, you made them, you know our power. God, you know what we stand in need of on today. God, I don't care who and what we have around us. God, we are turning our victory. We're turning our journey over to you. On our footsteps, show me where I need to be. And God, I believe your word is true. I believe that you will send me in a place that we will not leave out empty hands. Thank you. Because we know victory is already guaranteed. Wherever we go, God, as long as we trust you, as long as we're in your will, God, we know that you're going to be all right. I want to pray for that sin that's out there on today. If you're not saved, then you know you're not, but you want to be. Why don't you lift your hands right there and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Come into my life. 
save me now. I admit I've messed up. I admit I've done wrong. But on today, I believe that your son Jesus heart bled and died, rose and ascended, but now lives in my heart. Come on, say it. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. I'm a child of God. I'm saved now. Thank you, God, for every soul that has decided not to stray away. Continue to keep us in your loving care. Like all that you did. Pop us up on every minute. You're all with me. You'll the praise. The Lord is and on. And it's in Jesus' name. Come on, clap those in this hand and put together on today. Come on, you believe that you're not leaving out with your hand. Put those blessed hands together. Just clap them all over this place. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us on today. For those of you who are giving with us, that you use those options that are there on the screen. Amen. And give. PayPal. Give the five. Cash out. If that's too much, go to the church website. Click donate. However it is, thank you so much for your financial support to the ministry. And we still continue to do God's work. Pray for our city. Pray for our community. Pray for our state. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Hallelujah. God can still continue to get the glory out of our lives. Until the next time, may God bless you. May heaven bless